Okay, well, we're going to go through another free response problem dealing with integration and limits and so many other great things all combined. Um, this comes from the, I believe, the 2019 exam. Don't quote me on that. <clears throat> but um, here we go. Let's, let's check this one out. So what we have is we are given a graph, which is very traditional for most AP tests. The continuous function f is defined on a closed interval from negative 6 to 5. Um, the figure sh above shows a portion of the graph of f consisting of two lines, segments, a quarter of a circle, um, centered at a point 0.53. All right, so it's going to be centered at 0.53. And it is known that there is a point 3 and 3, negative square root of 5. Okay, so 3, and that's going to be at negative square root of 5 is on the graph of F. Okay, so from here, what we're gonna do is we're going to solve this, okay, by going, starting off and realizing what we have in our question. So they ask us if five to negative six of F of X DX is seven. So notice on this graph is that there is something going on over here for this function that they don't define or don't give us. So the graph is only from negative two to five, so that's only a portion they give us, but yet they say there is an area from negative six. So negative six is over here. Big question mark, what is happening from negative six to negative two? Well, that is what we want to know, all right? What is the area from negative six to negative two? That is really the question. So we're gonna find this value and show your work that leads to the right answer. So here we go. Well, first off, this is gonna use some properties of integration, all right? So if you wanna pause this and try it out yourself, go right ahead and then we'll go through it in just a little bit. Okay, so here we go, is that we know the integral from negative 6 to 5 of f of x dx is going to equal the integral from integral from negative 6 to negative 2 of f of x dx. And if we add that to the integral from negative 2 to 5, all right, of f of x dx, all right, that will equal this total. Okay, so understanding that we have the integral from negative 6 to 5, all right, we know that is going to equal 7. We are trying to figure out this value right here, the integral from negative 6 to negative 2 of f of x dx. And we are given the graph of this, okay, so therefore we can find the area of the curve, and they give us all this cool information regarding. Um, this area. So let's find this area. So we need to find the graph. We need to find the area, all right, under the curve from this value. So here we go. Um, right here, um, we know that this right there, okay, that is going to equal um, one one. That's going to equal one half. All right. So we're going to have a one half there. Um, we have another area right there, which appears to be another negative one half because it's below the x-axis. Um, right here, we have another triangle, all right, goes by, oops, and that was, that's, oops, not that area, what am I talking about right there, all right, if we want to find the area to here, all right, so that is one half. Um, this right here, okay, is hitting at that point, okay, um, right here, so we have one, one half, and that, so um, that value right there is going to be you know, you can just find the whole thing right here. All right, since it's a whole triangle. I apologize, that's what you're probably doing right now. So we have one, uh, one and a half. One and a half times, well, that's probably three halves. All right, and then times negative one. All right, and so what we have right there is going to be negative three-fourths. All right, negative three-fourths. All right, this value is going to be, all right, right there, it's going to be positive. Okay, because it's above the x-axis, all right, so we found that area. Positive above the x-axis, so that's going to equal, all right, one-half times, this right here is three-halves, because it's one-and-a-half. And then we have one, two, three, and three above. So that's going to be nine-half, nine-fourths, nine-fourths right there. And then finally, this area, well, what we're going to do is we're going to find um, and do a little bit of geometry, in order to find this area, we're going to take and find the rectangle. That's what I would do. All right. We're going to find this rectangle right here. And we're going to subtract out this quarter circle. So um, this area right here for the blue, 
is going to be the whole rectangle area, which is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. All right, so 3 times 3 is 9, minus, all right, this quarter circle right here. So the quarter circle is 1 fourth pi r squared. So r is 1, 2, and 3, so it would be 9. And so that area we can simplify to 9 minus 9 pi, 9 fourths of a pi. Okay, so, so, with all that information, let's add up all this cool, jazzy, neat stuff. So, um, we're going to take this, and we're going to add in a one-half. We're going to subtract a three-fourths. All right, we're going to take this right here. We're going to add in a, all right, nine-fourths in here. And that portion right there. And then we're going to, all right, add in a nine all right, um, minus 9 fourths pi, 9 fourths pi, okay? To find, finish this one off, all right, it's a lot of little algebra we're doing. Um, we can combine that, so we have 1 half, all right, right here. Um, this is going to turn to uh, plus 6 fourths, all right, plus a 9. Minus nine fourths of a pi. Um, this right here can turn into uh, three halves. All right, three halves. So one half plus, all right, three halves. All right. Plus nine plus nine fourths pi. Holy cow. A lot of little. I'm going here. We have four. We have two plus nine. All right. Plus the nine fourths of a pi. Oh, Kidoki, and that's going to give us 11. And so what we have right here, all right, is all of this, and it's going to come, keep on coming down, keep on coming down, keep on coming down, and that all equals 7, that all equals 7, that all equals 7. And so now from here, we have 11. Subtract that to the other side. All right, so we have 7 minus 11 minus 9 fourths of a pi right there. And so... What is this integral going to equal? El test de distance, la fin. All right, we're doing this. You probably can't see it over the smart notebook thing. I apologize for that. All right, well, that's going to be equal negative um, 4 minus 9 fourths pi. And that is our area. Hopefully, I found, if you noticed a mistake, I apologize. All right, but that, my friends, would be the value that we're looking for, negative 4 minus 9 fourths pi. All right, and that's using areas underneath the curve to help us figure out what is some different areas, all right, and, and doing that, okay? All right, well, hopefully that makes sense to you, the properties of exponents. We're going to do one more, and I'm going to take a pause, all right, so the video doesn't get too long. Um, we're just going to do this one right here. We're going to evaluate um, 3 to 5 of 2 f prime of x plus 4. All right, so in doing this one, um, we're going to do fundamental theorem. Okay, fundamental theorem of calc, um, of calculus. And what that says is we're going to take the integral of 3, 5 with the 2, f prime of x, and we're going to separate this into two different integrals. All right, and we're going to go to 3, 5 of 4 dx, and we're going to find these separately. Okay, we're going to find these separately. Okay, and to do that, um, well, first off, the integral of this, we're going to use the all right, um, antiderivative, and it'll help us figure this out. So for this one, in part B, I'm just going to put this down here. All right, so in part B right there, and just so you can see that, um, is that this is going to be, well, the antiderivative of F prime is F. So we're going to have 2F of X is the antiderivative. And we're going to find that area from 3 to 5, okay, 3 to 5. We're then going to add that to this antiderivative. Well, the antiderivative of 4 is 4X, and we're going to integrate that from 3 to 5 as well. Okay, so what we have then is doing this. We're going to have 2 times f of 5 minus f of 3, because we're going to use the fundamental theorem, all right? Upper limit minus lower limit. We plug in that the derivative. And then we'll have 5 times 4, which is 20, all right? Minus um, 3 times, which is 12, okay? 12. And so what is f of 5? Well, it just so happens, it just so happens, and I'm going to erase all this stuff, so I apologize. All right. Um, I'm going to, just so happens that we're given what f of 5 is. So what is f of 5? Well, f of 5 appears to be right here, because this is f. 
is zero. Okay, that's zero. F of three, oh, what do you know? If we don't know what that is, well, it says F of three is that value right there. So we're going to have this. So we have two times zero minus, all right, this value right there, because that's our value plug in there. So it's going to be negative three plus, because we have to make sure everything's the opposite of that value. All right. Um, and we'll combine those values. So it's going to turn into eight. And then from here, what we have is, this is going to be um, negative six plus two square roots of five. All right, plus eight. And we can finally simplify this to be, all right, going through. All right, um, in each one of these, that's going to be two plus two square roots of five. And that, my friends, is the integral of negative six to five of f of x. Oops, no. <laughs> oopsies, wrong, I read the wrong one. All right, and that is the integral of three, five, two f prime of x plus four, all right, dx. So once again, separating this into two separate ones, find the antiderivatives, understanding that the antiderivative of f prime is f, using fundamental theorem, upper limit minus lower limit, plug that into the antiderivative, same thing over here, plugging this into the antiderivative and solving. All right, two great problems on using areas with a graph um, and applying the fundamental theorem and properties of integration. We're going to finish up these other two um, in the next video. All right, good luck and God bless.